Well, praise the Lord. We're so glad you're here today. You that are watching all over the world, where are you? <laughs> Take a vacation. Come to hot Texas. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> I heard Keith Moore a little bit this morning talking about air conditioning. They ought to give the Nobel Peace Prize to the person that created air conditioning. That stopped a lot of killing in the world. I want to let you know. It's such a high honor to be here. Once again, God has been so good and gracious to us, and we can't thank you enough. And uh, this is our, my first session, and we'll be doing it all week long, and God is so good and gracious. My wife is here. Where's Kathy at? Uh, stand up, Kathy. Get, get Kathy, hang up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Been married to that woman 53 years. Oh, man, that's a lot, 53 years. Not in the bed. Uh, I, somebody bring me my briefcase. I left my glasses up there. It's on the side there in the back. I mean, you got, I mean, you got I mean, it's so dark back there. If the devil showed up, you wouldn't know it. <laughs> and he, the prince of darkness, gets it to, it's so dark out there. But God has been so good and gracious, and we just thank all of you for coming today and being a part of what God's doing or done, doing, and going to do. Me and George Pearson were talking from, we've talked many times for years, and he says, how do, you, how do you deem your success on your partnership? I said, I never let people forget what I'm doing. I always tell them what I'm doing, and then I tell them what I'm going to do. And God has been so good and gracious to us, and, because people like information. They want to be informed about different things, and it's just such a blessing of the Lord. So we thank each and every one of you. Did y'all, somebody heard what I said? Y'all looking for it? It's on the side there. What is that? Oh, yeah. Well, you, this is Fritz Brown. You know, give him a hand. That's Fritz. <laughs> Hallelujah. He'd been with me almost 40 years. Holly, he used to be 6'9". He kind of went down a little bit since then. <laughs> but anyway, we have been traveling, running all over the world. I told the Lord today, if you don't come in my lifetime, you're going to miss a great opportunity here. I just want you to know. I tell you, especially right now when it's hot, to think about that. So if you think this is hot, wait to, don't go to hell. Because <laughs> it's a lot worse. How many people brought your Bibles or your iPads or your telephones and things of that nature? Would you go with me to the book of Exodus? That's the second book of the Bible for you people that don't read the Bible. <laughs> Exodus chapter 3. You'd be surprised how many people don't read the Bible because they let the preacher preach it. Now, as you turn into Exodus chapter 3, I want to talk a little bit here. Uh, and without sounding prideful or arrogant, I am a vision specialist. And what I mean by that, I believe in vision and I, I receive what I say. I'm, I'm beyond confession. And I don't mean this to sound arrogant or prideful. I'm beyond confession. I'm in the possession. Now, what you confess, you must possess. But a lot of people confess and not possess it. There's something wrong with that, see? Now, so what, what are you saying and how are you saying it and to who are you saying it to? And when you understand those different things, and I just finished my visionary leadership company. It was phenomenal and powerful. And I dealt with the panoramic view of the vision. And as I was praying, I was going to do something totally different in my day sessions. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to preach on vision because see, vision, without a vision, people perish. Yes. But I'm going to go a different, a different way. So if you were at my visionary leadership, I'm going to do all new points, all completely different thing than what you heard at that. And God is so good and gracious. So if you got your Bibles, I want to read a little bit about Exodus before. Exodus is the record of Israel's birth as a nation. You have to understand that. It is the record of Israel's birth as a nation. And within the protective womb of Egypt, the Jewish family of 70 rapidly multiplied. It was 70 Jews, 70 people that came there when Joseph was there. At the right time, accompanied with severe birth pains they had, an infant nation num num uh, numbering between two and three million people is brought into the world where it is divinely protected, fed, and, nurse, and nurtured. That is what Exodus was all about, the bringing out of the nation of Israel. And then through that, we were the seed of Abraham and all of us also too. Exodus chapter 3, I want to talk about the sight of vision. Now, the reason why I'm saying about that, we just finished this visionary conference, was four churches believe in God to get some builders. They had, when they got back home from our visionary conference, they had it in three days. Amen. Now, I'm believing God for what you believe in for, your vision that you'll get it during this, during this believers convention. Amen. Or just right after it, whatever. Because it's time for things to manifest. Yes. You see what I mean? I believe in manifestation. Yes. See, a, a revelation without a manifestation is a missed opportunity. Yes. What well, would give you revelation without manifestation? Because if it is, it's just a missed opportunity. Yes. 
Because most people go by what they see when they should be going by what they hear. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So in my day sessions, I'm going to deal with the, that vision creates inquiry. We're going to deal with that this morning. Then tomorrow we'll, uh, this afternoon, then tomorrow we'll vision ask for direction. Vision will talk to you. Then we'll deal with vision. We'll see goodness in, in the next session. And then finally, you can't live without a vision. That'll be on Friday. Now, Wednesday night I'm preaching. I'm going to do something totally different. And I hope you can come and be a part of that as, as the Lord directs me. God called a man named Moses of all people. Moses. Why Moses? Why not? Why not? He called you. Why not? What do you think you have to have to be called? One word, obedience. Just simply obey. It's better to obey than to sacrifice. Let's face it. We know a lot about sacrifice and we just don't know much about obeying. Obeying. I mean, boy, we've been taught to suffer. Just suffer. Just beat me, Jesus. Beat me, Jesus. No, no, he don't want to beat you. We know a lot about suffering. We don't know much about obedience. And it's amazing to me that when people obey, it's like your children. When your children obey you, you bless them. They don't struggle as much until they get into disobedience. And you can change obedience with just three letters. This. Take the dis off, it's obedience. Disobedience. Compromise, take the C-O-M off, it's promise. All you got to do is add three letters to it and mess it all up. I want to read Exodus chapter 3. I want to start reading with verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared. Now, who is that angel? That's the Jehovah angel. That is Metatron. That's who that is. You have to understand that. And I'll deal with that a little later on. And the, and the angel, the, see, God hadn't appeared yet. Yahweh has not showed up yet. I'm going to prove that to you right now. A lot of people think that, that, that was God. No, no, that's Metatron. God always has someone before him. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the flame of a fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. Now watch this. This is the sight of a vision here. This, this is Metatron. This is Jehovah angel. And what did God say about him? Do not provoke him because he will not forgive your trespasses. See, everybody thought that was Jesus. No, 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 no. Jesus would forgive your trespasses. He's a savior. Metatron, the whole nother ball game. Watch it. He, 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 I mean, he just doesn't believe in disobedience at all. Let me read verse two again. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, notice he had to say something. I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burned. He's not thinking spiritual. He's thinking intellectual. His mind is saying that thing ought to be burning up. But it's not being consumed. Notice that. Verse three. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, not the angel of the Lord, now God is showing up, Yahweh. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said to him, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Two different people here. Metatron, Jehovah, Yahweh, I am that I am. And then God tells him what to do. In verse five, and he said, draw nigh hither, put off, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. And then he begins to talk to him, tell him who he is. Then he call, God calls Moses to leadership. Now, but Moses is figuring, listen, I don't, I don't talk well. I, listen, I, yeah, I, I've had it with Egypt. Yeah. And besides, I kill somebody, they don't know nothing about it. <laughs> but they just found out about it. And if I go back there, they're going to kill me. No, said. But verse 11, Moses said unto God, who am I that I should go into Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, certainly I will be with thee and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. Verse 13 is very powerful. When Moses said unto God, and Moses said unto God, behold, when I come unto thy children of Israel and say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say, what is his name? You see, God was an unnamed God at that time. What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, and I, and I am, I am hath sent me unto you. So I want to talk today about that sight of vision. 
And I'm going to tell you that vision is the mother of inquiry. Would you write that down? We're going to take a little, we're going to do a little teaching. Teaching is telling and preaching is yelling. <laughs> I had to kind of, kind of break it down a little bit, but that's how it works. <laughs> oh, and I can, I can yell, God, I mean, I can preach. Son. I, I, I prefer to preach than to teach. I just like, I like spit flying. <laughs> People can't only stand up, just knock them down. But a lot of times you don't learn much about preaching. That's right. That's right. You learn a lot of emotionalism. I said this at my visionary conference, the fivefold ministry, and God gave some apostles, not, not all, some, right. apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, the fivefold ministry. People always, always ask me how to describe the, what's the difference between the five? And I said this, and, I, and I, I'm gonna make it as simple. The apostle is a delivery truck. Yeah. Yep. He's got everything in the truck. He's come to set up shop, son. Yeah. He's gonna work this thing, my Lord. And my, he shows up, and he pulls open the door, everything that you need, church-wide, evangelism-wise, everything is in that truck. That's the apostle's job. The prophet, what is he? He's an alarm clock. Everything's quiet, all of a sudden, whoa, that's say it'll shake everybody up. Oh Lord, man, I mean, right out of that silence of things. I mean, the prophet is like an alarm clock. The evangelist. A fire truck. He burning, buddy. Whoo! And when a fire truck goes down the road, as loud as it can be. That's why preaching is yelling. Hey, hey! Just preaching up a storm. People get off the road, let the fire truck by. Then they get it back and follow the truck to see where the fire is. That's an evangelist. Apostle, prophet, evangelist. Pastor. That's the guy in the truck saying, you can't eat this. Because you're not old enough to eat it. You got to drink this formula. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's just too much meat in there. You can't eat it. You got to do this. Do you understand? No, no, you can't have that. And that's why people get mad at Pastor. Because they tell you when to eat and how to eat. Because they know what you need. Because they know the nutritional value that's in the truck. The teacher. Amen. Read the directions. It's a good analogy, isn't it? Teacher said, read the directions and you'll simply find out how to work this thing. Now that's putting it in the natural of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. God calls Moses, calls him as a leader, even though he thinks he can't do that. That has nothing to do with God's vision. But first he had to get his attention. And how did he do it? Intellectual activity. Let's burn a bush. Let's cause a fire that doesn't consume. Now, wait a minute. How can this be? So vision is the mother of inquiry. And tomorrow it's the mother of direction. And the next day is the mother of goodness. And we're going to deal with several of these things. So I want you to write this down. Vision in, creates inquiry. To understand a great sight, vision, you must be in a good mood. Moses was in a good mood, sitting on the backside of the mountain. Just enjoying himself, you know. All of a sudden he's just noticing things. He's, he's not in a bad mood. And no, and when you notice things when you're in a good mood, when you're in a bad mood, you're so consumed with your own self. But when you're in a good mood, you're just looking around and he sees it. See, vision, to understand a great vision or, 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 you know, or sight, you must be in a good mood. See, and to be in a good mood is to be ready whenever God says to be ready. Yes. I like Kathy being in a good mood. <laughs> I've seen her in a bad mood. You don't want to see that. And I, and I same way with myself. I, I, I'm real good in a good, but sometimes I get in a, in, in a bad mood, very seldom. <laughs> okay, Lord, forgive me for that lie. I just lied like a dog in front of everybody. <laughs> to understand a great vision or a great sight, you must be in a good mood. In other words, you got to be ready because you see, you're about ready to see something prophetic. Something spiritual. See, and what is Prophecy but history wrote in advance. Yeah. Now, the reason why God's telling me to pre preach this today, because I honestly believe since this happened, and what we finished our visionary, people getting their prayers answered like crazy. In fact, Riley told me he had more people say, remember I told you, he said, you better get ready. More say this time than ever. Am I correct? Yeah. This stuff, we don't just say words That's right. to see where the words may bounce off the wall. We expect results. So to understand a great sight or vision, you must be in a good mood. So are you in a good mood? Yes. All right. Now write this down. 
Some have no vision because they haven't, t- haven't taken time to turn, t- trouble to turn around to see what God is showing. Some have no vision because they, have taken the, they haven't taken the trouble to turn aside to see him. See, when God called me to the ministry, I was like the Apostle Paul. What will thy have me to do? Evidently, you got a job for me. I'm not looking to lay down. We're not going to be laying on the ground in heaven and angels dropping grapes in our mouth. God is a God of creation. He's still creating. Right now, the universe is expanding faster than the speed of light, yet Einstein says you can't, nobody can go faster than the speed of light. Space does. God does. Right now, as we're speaking, at 186,000 miles a second, that thing is expanding. Why? To fit us to fit the creation ideas of God. Now we know there are other universes as well as this one. Yet we can't even get out of our solar system yet. But we're going somewhere. Some have no vision because they haven't taken the trouble to turn aside to see him. See, to see what God wants to do. What will thy have me to do? And a lot of times God will show you and you'll think, but I don't want to do that. But you need exactly that to get to what you want to do. God don't put dummies on the field. He's not going to put pampers on you and send you out in the field. Your pampers are going to fall off. (laughs) See, you got to know something here. And that's what he's talking about Moses. Moses, look at this. Because you're about ready to speak to someone you had not known before. Ooh. Now he's thinking Metatron, the Jehovah, whoo, but all of a sudden Yahweh shows up. Notice Metatron didn't tell him to take his shoes off. Why? Because God Almighty is way holier than an angel. But I mean, it's perfection to the core. Take your shoes off. Why? Why? Leather is dead things and God will not have dead stuff around him. That's why Jesus couldn't go to funerals. He messed them up. (laughs) Death is not a part of it. And he said, no one takes my life. I lay it down freely. See, Jesus saw this great sight of who? What's the great sight? You. Amen. You're the great sight. Go to the world and preach the gospel to every creature. For God so loved the world. You see, that's what God had on his mind. Yeah. So some have no vision because they haven't taken the trouble to turn aside to see him. See, a lot of people, they want God, they just want to lay down. See, that's laziness. Yeah. Write this down. Vision is missed through laziness or indifference or unwillingness. I tell my own partners, I will not be lazy with your seed. Why do you preach so much? Why not? When you're gonna retire, do I look tired? I I don't think I ever will, I don't know. I mean, I could. Let me tell you something about me and Kathy. We could have retired 20 years ago. Fly to Hawaii, buy a place, and suffer for Jesus the rest of our lives. (laughs) Why? How long can you play golf? How long can you fish? Whatever you like to do. You see, to me, I'm a generation that works. I believe in work. I got it from God and I got it from my dad. Difference between my dad and God, my dad charged me rent and God didn't charge me anything. (laughs) He did. I had to pay rent since I was 11 years old to stay in my own house, which means I had to get a job. Now you can't do that today because of child labor laws, thank God. But it sure made a man out of me. Today, you can't hardly get a kid out of your house and he's 45. (laughs) Good God. (laughs) See, that laziness. Vision is missed through laziness. Boy, Mr. Michael, write me an ugly letter on that. Vision is missed through laziness or indifference or unwillingness. Lord, 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 I don't want to do that. Well, the Bible said, if you be willing and obedient. Now, some people are willing, but they're not obedient. Some people are obedient and they're not willing. Like, for example, in an offering, they're willing to give, but not obedient. Well, I ain't doing that. Then some people say, my God, I'm obedient, but I'm not willing. I'm going to give it, but I don't want to. And you give, you see, you lost both times in either way. You must be willing and obedient to eat the good of the land. You have to really understand vision to own the land. Then what you going to do with the land? Just let grass grow on it? 
I was flying to South Africa not long ago. I mean, I fly all over the world. People say, he don't, he, he don't need a jet. Let me just give you an idea what I've done in the last month. I said, well, I started out, my God. God said, go to Bermuda. Nancy, I've never been to Bermuda in my life. I said, God, I don't know nobody in Bermuda. He said, I do. <laughs> I said, well, tell somebody. I mean, and I met the guy that runs the, all the churches in Bermuda. Bishop Lamb. How you doing, Bishop? I like him, boy. 84 years old. I mean, this guy's something. He, he was a, I've never been to Bermuda. I've flown over it many times over the Atlantic Ocean. But I have never been, I, I, and we flew in there. You can't rent a car in Bermuda. Only people that got cars are people that live in Bermuda. You got to get a golf cart. <laughs> I'm not lying. I mean, it's, I think we can't get a car. No, 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 no. Because it is small, beautiful, pink sand. And you're not on drugs. It's really pink sand. <laughs> <laughs> I thought my needle a LSD here. <laughs> this is pink, baby. <laughs> pink, pretty, nice. Well, we had a meeting. Bermuda. Now, this, and this was just, just, just flew in and preached it that night. Then we took off from Bermuda and went to Verona, Italy. Wow. Why? Kathy wanted some Gucci. No, no, no. I'm just <laughs> she did get some Gucci, but uh, uh, we went and preached there. I got, and, uh, and, the, and the pastor and I was talking to him and his wife and we were having lunch together and I was supposed to just preach that night and then I'm out of there. I'm traveling every day somewhere, going somewhere. To make a long story short, I could see and they wanted to ask me something. But said, we don't, we don't, we, we don't want to uh, take too much of your time. I said, yeah, you do. <laughs> just ask me what? Well, we're having a lunch in the morning. Would you come? Yeah, and there was a hundred, was a baby of a hundred pastors and Rhema students there in Verona eating at this Italian restaurant. Make a long story short, it was a wonderful place. Okay, the first time they met since the COVID. Am I correct, Kathy? Yeah, and now watch this. So I don't know. You know. Then I noticed the little frowns on all the little waiters and waitresses because each one of them paying their own meal. That's 100 tickets. Mm. And the Lord said, buy the meal. Right. Yeah. I said, okay. I said, if y'all don't mind, boy, I could even. <laughs> Man, the waitress and the waitress went, oh, thank God. We only got to have to show one check. I said, I'll buy y'all all meal, all of y'all, 100 of you. People started crying. I'm the one that should have been crying. <laughs> it cost me about $3,000, whatever it was. I, I don't care. It didn't make no difference to me. We had a wonderful, wonderful time in the presence of God. It was great. So preached that night, boom. Then I flew to Copenhagen, Denmark. Never been to Denmark before. Copenhagen. Boy, I liked it. It was nice. I went in there, preached. I mean, didn't have time to preach. God knocking people out the chairs in the back before I could get to the back. One girl, I walked in, she go, bam! And she just hit the ground. I said, God, the Lord didn't tell you nothing. And how did she say? She said, she says, I'm a heavy drinker. She said, I'm a heavy drinker. <laughs> <laughs> she drinks the Holy Ghost. Bam! Just hits the ground. I mean, they falling on each other. We stepping over bodies. We are having a wonderful time. So in three days, you don't think I need a jet? Go to Bermuda. Go to Verona, Italy. Go to Copenhagen. Finish that night. Boom! Flew to Beale, Switzerland. Rented the hockey arena. Never had that happen before. Now, I didn't rent it. I was asked, and my God, and uh, who, uh, the guy that took over uh, uh, Reinhard Bunker's ministry. Uh, yeah, you know him. <laughs> he comes up, he said, man, I knew if Jesse the plans that meeting, I'm going I'm to book this meeting myself. I came up to him, I said, excuse me, I don't even know these people. I just came here because the Lord told me. You can see people go, oh. Because it costs a lot of money to go to Switzerland. You know, the beautiful place, be be your sweat, where Rolex is, which I was interested in because I have helped them people. <laughs> I've given away six Rolex presidents. <laughs> Given them away. I mean, I, and I've had every kind you could think of, plus whatever. Anyway, I'm not bragging about that. Just, just being a blessing. We preach. Gave an altar call. 3,000 people came forward. <laughs> this is what they told me, Nancy. They said, now, Brother Jesse, Switzerland's got money. Don't talk about money because, buddy, you, they'll shut down on you in a second. I said, I'll break it in five minutes. Amen. They, they thought it was cockiness and arrogance. No, I already had the vision. Or right. I had been to the burning bush. <laughs> I already heard God say, I am that I am. Amen. See, I'm still on the message. Listen to me. So I'm not being indifferent. I'm not being lazy. And I'm not being unwilling. Within five minutes, my God broke it. And they start turning out $500 slips that people would like to get. And then they, they ran out. That's a blessing. That was a great blessing of the Lord. Yeah. Not bragging about that. He said, but I know what I'm going to do. 
I know when I'm going to do it. I know how I'm going to do it. Why? Because I thought that vision inside and outside. And to do anything in life, you have to be like that. If you want to be a financial best, you better know something about finances. Because it's more than paper. You want to know something about investment. You got to know how to invest, what to invest, and who to invest in. And who invests in you, if you're that kind of a person. So vision is missed through laziness or indifference or unwillingness. That's why I preach them. I will not be lazy. Why? Because every day someone's sending me money. And I don't mean that pridefully. My partners helped me greatly. And in 47 years of preaching this gospel, I've never had a financial deficit. Never. Why? I didn't believe for it. I would have to take time to believe for that. Have you ever saw me sick or sad? I'm, I've been with, preaching with Brother Colton 34 years. This is my 33rd Southwest Believers Convention, but I've been preaching with 30. I did the minister's conference and all that kind of stuff before. Have you ever saw me sad, sick, depressed, discouraged, despondent, broke? I don't have time for that. Now you do what you want to do. See, you don't see yourself. You see yourself sad, sick, broke, busted, and we're going to struggle. Gloom and despair. No, I, don't, I see myself blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out. Great is he was in me than he was in the world. If God be for me, I'm starting to yell it. If God be for me, who can be against me? I say to that mountain, get out of my way. I will not climb you. I will dissolve you. Okay, let me calm down here. Go back to telling instead of yelling. I refuse to be. <laughs> I heard people say that all my life. Make it plain. Does it sound hard? <laughs> I've always wondered why. Make it plain. Okay, I, I like that. It's good. <laughs> you know? So I just so when people say you can't do that, they just told me I could. Yeah. And I've had the best tell me I couldn't. I've had some of the greatest financial gurus. I'm talking big guys. Vice presidents of Chase Manhattan. I'm talking about hedge fund operators dealing in billions of dollars. You can't do that. I said, watch me. Now, they think it's arrogance and cockiness. What I know is confidence and assurance. See, what I know is two words, my God. I don't know about your God. My God. Shell, not might, I don't know. Well, ah, no, no, shell. Hey! <laughs> shell. Not, I don't know, you, you never know how you, no! No, you don't know how he is. Supply. That's why I never ask him for a need. I refuse to do that. So such a waste of spiritual energy to go to God and ask him for a need. It's your problem. Ooh, I caught your attention, didn't I? When he said he'll supply, how many need? All. How many need? All. Oh, let me get black with it. How many need? Lord? All. Hey! <laughs> get ready, get ready, get, get, get. No, no, okay. <laughs> I've preached for Jake's before. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Well, why would I ask him for a need if he said he'd supply all? That's a waste. I don't tell him what I need. I tell him what I want. Oh, that's greed. No, no. That's growth. The Lord's my shepherd. I shall not. I shall supply. My God shall supply. The Lord is my how many times he got to say that? When are we going to believe this Bible? Instead of study it through laziness or indifference or trying to be homiletical, hermeneutical, philosophical, theological, trying to find something no one's ever heard. What they haven't heard is you. Say what God says. That's why Jesus was successful. People say it's because of the miracle. No, 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 no. That was just a sign of him. He said, I only say what my father says yes. and I only do what my father says to do. Yes. Miracles are just a byproduct. Yeah. Yeah. It's like gold. The byproduct of gold is jewelry. But the raw substance is gold. Write this down. The closer we come to the vision, the nearer we advance to the secrets of God. See, Moses had to get close to All of a sudden he meets the unnamed God. The God of no name. But he finds out he's got over 70 names as he fellowships with God. This vision creates inquiry. I must turn and see this great sight. 
is your vision got your attention. That's what I love about Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Their vision got my attention. I'm going to say this when I receive their offer probably on Wednesday. Vision and partnership are synonymous terms. Yes, they are. You, ain't nobody going to be a partner to you unless you have a vision. Uh-huh. And if you don't have a vision, you're not going to have a partner. You can, you, you, you can interchange those two words very easily. See, vision is missed through laziness or indifference or unwillingness. And the closer we come to the vision, the nearer we advance to the secrets of God. Now Moses is standing. Take your shoes off. You don't know what to do. And I am that I am. Didn't say one word. He starts speaking paragraphs. What, what, what did he speak? Vision. Moses. Now, if you can't hear him say Moses, think of Charlton Heston in Ten Commandments. Moses. <laughs> Moses. Take off the shoes off thy feet. You know who was using, you know what voice that was? That was Charlton Heston's voice. That they slowed down. He's talking to himself. <laughs> How you know that? Uh, special features. Get the DVD, you'll find out. Get the special features. I like that better than the movie. The closer we come to the vision, the nearer we advance to the secrets of God. When God told me to believe the unbelievable, receive the impossible because of the doable. You know what I did? Watch me. How do I do that? See, I can whisper in here and hear me. And I said, I need to know more of you. Amen. He said, conversation, mm, not prayer. Oh, I lost a few of you right there. Let me go over here. Conversation, not prayer. Prayer is good, but you're always asking God for things in prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus. Father, if I don't hear from you today, nobody knows. <laughs> But when you say this, hello, Jesus. And he says, hi, Jesse. Oh, let's talk. And he'll talk about anything. And the reason why people can't hear his voice is Vince Brand to get up and walk out. And he goes, I I was about ready to say something. Mm. See, when you understand that the closer we come to the vision, the nearer we advance to the secrets of God. See, when I got close to my vision, not only did I earn, learn secrets, I saw the end. Yes. See, God finished, then he began. Yes. That's, right. That's why he's never struggles at all on anything you ask, because he already finished that, now began. Yeah. Yeah. See, he knew that the Gentiles would come into the race, that we would be the seed of Abraham. Yeah. Why would you hate a Jew? when you've been adopted as a Jew into the blood covenant of God Almighty. Now watch this, a better covenant. Now you're going to make the, uh, the biological Jews a little mad. No, what's better about it? Anybody can join. Yeah. Let me show you something. I just preached a sermon. I love it so much. I got to preach it again. And the curtain tore. That's the title of it. And the curtain tore. Let me tell you something. Jesus with a loud voice gave up the ghost. You can't when you die in a crucifixion, you can't talk. No. Your body, every joint in your body is out of socket. You die of asphyxiation because you're hanging. You can't, that's why they break the bones so you can't push yourself up to breathe. Uh-huh. That's, why they, and that's why no bone was broken. He hollered, he, he, could, he was still strong. He hollered so loud, God took that 60 foot curtain, that veil and ripped it from the top to the bottom. You know what that meant? What? Now, earthquakes are going crazy. Yep. Rocks are splitting. They, Nancy, they forgot, they forgot about the earthquakes. They forgot about the rocks. But when that veil came down, they went, oh, my God. You know what that meant? If Judas would have, I'm spitting, I apologize. If Judas would have, <laughs> let me get back a little bit. If Judas, <laughs> if Judas would have, <laughs> If Judas would have repented, he could have walked right into the holies of holies. The veil was gone. Light came in. And what is Jesus? The light of the world. They forgot about the earthquake. Glenn, they forgot, they forgot about the earthquake. They forgot about the rocks. They forgot about all that. Because they wanted to look at a God who could not be seen. 
who was total darkness in that Ark of the Covenant. Two veils. Veil in the holy place. Veil of the holies of holies. You go study it all out. Some say, some say it was four, foot, four inches. Some say it was four foot uh, thick. But to rip it from the top to the bottom, you had to be strong. And Jesus did it with his voice. All of a sudden, they saw the Ark of the Covenant with the manna in it. Aaron's rod that budded. The Ten Commandments. Something better. How can it be better? This way. Hello, Jesus. Hi, Jesse. No in between no more. No high priest once a year. You better be right or you're dead. Only mediator you got is Jesus. And he likes you a lot. You see what I'm saying? The closer we come to the vision, the nearer we advance to the secrets of God. See, the closer I came to Kenneth and Gloria's vision, the more I knew of the secrets of Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. See, I can talk a lot and not say nothing. (laughs) I've learned to do that quite well. Just talk a lot. Just enjoy yourself. Yeah. But don't say nothing. Because I'm on the board of directors of Kenneth Copeland. I know everything that's going on in this ministry. I know every financial. I know it all. But you ain't going to pry it out of me because that's business. But you might hear us talk about me dropping a motorcycle. <laughs> that's just fun. We do have fun. You ought to see me, Jerry, and Ken when we get together. We're the three amigos. All right. <laughs> I, we have more fun. You're, I'm telling you, it's the most amazing thing. We have more fun. You can shake stick at more. Why, friends? But I also know when the prophet comes. How do I know? Alarm clock. Boom. And it can be in the middle of a restaurant. All of us laugh and joke. Boom. And the prophetic begins to come forth out of Brother Copeland. We immediately, me and Jerry, we shift. After that finishes, we shift back. Do you see my point? So I know when God is, boom, God, Yahweh. And then when he's, hey, Jesse. You just shift. And you only know that by conversation, by fellowship. I went from religion to relationship, from relationship to fellowship. Write this down. Vision must have a conscientious research if it is to be developed. Vision must have conscientious research if it is to be developed. How do you do that? It's done by reverence, you see. You have to develop your vision before you ever do one thing with it. See, you have got to, in your mind or in your spirit, soul, mind, it has to be finished for you to begin. Because in Ephesians 5, 1 says, be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. That means you have success going somewhere to succeed. You see, now I see what I'm doing, what I, what's happening to me is before I build something, I have the money now. Not one would raise the money. I don't have no problem with that. Now, Jesus didn't raise money, but he did raise fish. (laughs) You see, when he tells me to drop the nets, I don't drop a net. Because Buddy Peter lost a lot when he dropped that net. The fish said, I came to give you my life, but you would not. So see you later, boy. (laughs) Went back into into the Galilee, into the Sea of Galilee. Let me say it again. Vision must be, must have conscientious research if it is to be developed. This is done by reverence. You reverence God. When you understand that, you'll understand that vision always creates fellowship. After a while, you get to know God so good. Oh, some of y'all will get mad at this. That you know his moods. When you've been married a long time, you know your wife's moods. And she knows your moods. You know your children's moods. In fact, a good mama knows when a kid is sick before they get sick. They can begin to see it before the child even begins to feel it. Why? A creator. God didn't need us, guys. Oh, but he needed Mary. Creation. On all the battlefields of the world, you never heard people as they died say, tell my daddy bye. Forget about your daddy. Don't say nothing about your old daddy. They said, mama. Shout, ladies, I just set you free. 
mama. There's a vast difference between being a mother and being a mama. Oh, that's night and day. Mama. Tell my mama. Not that they don't love their daddy. Yeah, we love. But see, all we did was sow seed. That's it. And hope she liked it. <laughs> am, I, am I shocking y'all? It's just the truth. And you can't say the man, man say, oh, she liked it. You don't know. If she says it's trash, it's trash. You know it and I know it. Women control these world, man. But what happened? Cooked that seed. Was willing to suffer for the seed. Was willing to get fat for the seed. To get stretch marks for the seed. All the stuff that every man wants. This beautiful woman, man. Mm -mm. And right at the end of that pregnancy, she's all swollen. <laughs> Look at a man. Hey, man. That's why God could, would never, never let a man have a baby. There'd only be one, and that's it. <laughs> we ain't going through this pain, Jack. Uh -uh, this ain't going to happen. Hmm. Mary pondered these things, cooked these things in her heart. Yeah. What a vision. Vision must have conscientious research. If it is to be developed, it's done by reverence. Write this down. Vision will consume you with holy fire. But you must have thick skin to handle the heat. Let me say that again. Vision will consume you with holy fire. But you must have thick skin to handle the heat. It's not easy to develop vision. It, it requires work. Discipline. Dedication. Commitment. Never forgetting. Yeah, it's iron sharpening iron, which creates heat, which can burn. Vision will consume you with holy fire. I am consumed with the vision God has for me. Now, when I'm here, Jesse Duplantis does not exist. I erase myself. I'm a brick in the wall at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. I'm gonna deal with his vision her vision. People want to get up on that stage so they can better their ministry. You know, if I can just get it. And there's nothing wrong with somebody embracing you. Don't misunderstand me. But what I'm saying, that's why some of you couldn't get up there because you had you, you yourself on your mind than the vision that God had given Kenneth and Gloria. With me, I don't exist right now. I'm talking Kenneth and Gloria. I can even talk a little bit like Gloria. Hello, Jess. I can even kind of look with my emotions of Kenneth. When you say something that I, I say he don't like, he go like this. Swings that arm a little bit. And then he'll do this. Boy, and I mean, the eyes are piercing through you, man. But it's not something bad. You hang around people, you can imitate them pretty easy. Mm. But the reason why, I caught their vision before I knew them. I wasn't trying to get to know them. I, I didn't need a job when I met Kenneth and Gloria. My first year of event, my first Sunday, first time I ever preached, I, the first sermon I preached, I booked six weeks. Within six weeks, I was booked for a year. Within a year, I was booked for five years. Today, I got over 9,000 requests. I just, it, 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 I thought, Nancy, that as I got older, my ministry would decrease, which is okay, because they want younger people. Hey, look at me. My eyebrows, I look like Mr. Clean. Look, they got white now. They're starting to come. But it hasn't. It's increased. I got kids fighting their mom and daddy when I go to a church. I ain't going to church and church. I want to go hit Uncle Jesse. They call me Uncle Jesse. I can be their grandfather. Great grandfather, some of them. Why? What do they see? 
Oh, he's funny. No, no. People don't drive hundreds of miles for being funny. Vision. He's got something. Mm. And what is that? And eventually you will not recognize who I am. You see me there and go, my God, Jesus showed up at the Believers Convention. Oh, you're mad at me by that. It's not me that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Not by your faith, by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and he gave himself for me. So I don't frustrate the grace of God. Got to remember we're in the end times. That's why they're frustrating times. That's one of the reasons why Flashpoint is so popular. People are frustrated. Don't know what to do. I know exactly what to do. I read the last chapter in the book of Revelation. I read the first chapter in the book of Genesis and 1188 chapters in between them. See, vision will consume you with holy fire, but you must have thick skin to handle the heat. Now, I don't want to take Jerry's time. I got to be careful here. I believe in honor and reverence. Write this down. Vision will make an investigator out of you. See, that's exactly what happened to Moses. Let me go see this great sight. Vision will make an investigator out of you. Investigation of the facts of oneself, of the work, and the maker of all those things. Let me say it again. Vision will make an investigator out of you. <coughs> Investigation of the facts of oneself, of the work that you're supposed to do, and the maker of all those things. When you see that, and you do that through vision creating fellowship. When will you quit? Here's a statement I wrote. Vision must always be continuous and never interrupted. Never. If you ever go on vacation with me and Kenneth and Gloria and Jerry and Carolyn, we used to do those motorcycle trips, Jan, we had more fun. Dennis and Vicki Burke and um, Jeannie and, uh, and, and Happy Caldwell. We never inter interrupted our visions. People said, now y'all need to go rest. Well, we rested. But as soon as we sat down, we started talking about God. We had to interrupt ourselves all the time. One time Vicki Burke said, excuse me, I got something to say. <laughs> so we all shut up and listened to what Vicki had to say. And she said some good stuff. You just got to jump in there, man. Now that Kathy's pastor and I can't even get a word else in it anymore. <laughs> she told me that the other day, you can't learn from me. I'm your pastor. I got a little irritated. I said, yeah, but who signs your check? <laughs> who make that check good? She goes, God. I said, I got you. I, I, I understand that. <laughs> Vision will make an investigator out of you. Hmm. The reason why some of you hadn't done your vision, you hadn't investigated it. In investigation of the facts. What is it going to take to do this? Of oneself. Am I willing to do this? Am I obedient to do this? Of the work. What does the work need? What does the work want? And the maker of all those things. Because after that's all said and done, you go before the Father God. I'm going to say this and I'll close. Years ago, I have a wonderful board of directors, the blessings of the Lord. Most of them are women. Why women? Because women see things totally different than men. Mm -hmm. They really do. And you know, I've never been, uh, I believe in women preachers. I have no problem with a woman being my boss. She's just the boss, what are you gonna do? I don't have any problem with that. It has nothing to do with sex in any way. She, it's just evidently they thought she was smarter than anybody else, so they made her the boss. So anyway, the Bible said, present your petitions and supplication with thanksgiving. So I, this is the very, this is probably 43 years ago. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. So I was sitting out and I had to present my vision <laughs> to my board on Monday. This is Sunday night. So I wrote some things out on my list. I had a pencil and paper, you know, legal pad and all that kind of stuff right now. And I actually acted it out. I took it off and I said, Lord, he said, present your petitions 
your, your, your petitions and supplications with thanksgiving. What do you think? I actually lift up the piece of paper. Like this. And I saw it in my spirit that the Lord took the paper and that's it. And he went. I don't have a job. Uh-huh. There's no faith in this. Yeah. I said, what? And here's the key. Remember this, all of you that have ministries or businesses. It don't make no difference whether you're in secular business or ministry. He said, you determine what, what you're going to do next year by last year's receipts. Mm. But what your ministry or your business brought in the year before and you added it a little bit to it. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you wouldn't look like a failure. Yeah. Mm. I said, give me back the paper. <laughs> and I just tore it up. And I wrote the most unbelievable, impossible. And that's why he gave me that statement. Believe the unbelievable, receive the impossible because it's doable. I mean, I wrote something, I presented it to my board. They all went, you got to be kidding, Jesse. There's no way we, we can do this. I said, I didn't ask you to do it. Right. What do you mean, we? Yeah. I'm not dealing with we here. <laughs> I said, I, I will never ever present a vision to God anymore determined by last year's receipts. Mm-hmm. Now, normally we look at, we close out our year on December 31st or on January 1st, starting a new year. God said, I will do it all. I said, the Lord said he'll do it all. Well, I'll tell you what, only he can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I said, y'all haven't taken time to investigate this. You already put barricades and fear barricades and can't and I can't and I can't do it before we even started the trip. God put everything on that list, done everything on that list by October the 1st. That's been 43 years ago, 40, well, maybe longer, I don't know. And you know, he's kept that promise every year. Usually by October the 1st, everything I believe for has come to pass. And the um, November, December, we call that lanyap. That's a cage that means a little extra. We just slide into the new year. Vision will make an investigator out of you. Investigation of the facts of oneself. I found something about myself that day of the work and the maker of all those things. So the Lord said, you want to partner with me? I said, yes, I do. 50-50 or 51-49? Now, when I do business, it's 51-49 and I'm 51. You never get, you never get rid of your control. He said, are we one, Jesse? I said, yes, Lord. He said, 50-50. You command me, don't get mad at me. He said, command you me concerning my word. You command me, Jesse, and I command you. And we'll build this thing. I said, I'm yours. Let's go. 47 years, never had a financial deficit. (laughs) That's amazing to me. 47 years. Didn't believe for it. Why? Made a covenant. A better covenant. Did you ever run out of money? Yeah. Did they steal your offerings? Yeah. But before I got home, I was blessed. My mom, God, angels literally gave me money. I I thought they were people. Then I turned around, they weren't there no more. Just the most amazing thing. In my book, The the Hidden Help, I talk about that stuff. It's it's amazing. I'd come home and I'd say, man, do you know what God did? And Kathy said, what did God do? I said, a lot. She says, detail, Jesse. I want detail. (laughs) So this is part one of this. Vision creates inquiry. See, I see y'all doing this. I've created something here. What, mine? No, I don't exist. I'm working for Kenneth Copeland Ministries right now. Ah, but I just got into your vision to make you look at it. And if then, if thou canst believe, I'll put a little King James on you. 
it'll happen before the end of this convention. Amen. One of my visionary conferences, I said there'll be three millionaires here tomorrow, next year. People jump like crazy. Did they show up, Kathy? I mean, people that, one man only made $35,000 a year. And he came and he said, I'm a millionaire. I said, I feel, he said, it feel good. <laughs> what did you do to him? Stirred up his belief. That's it. Made him see himself. And made him see the work that God said he could do. Did you enjoy it this afternoon? Yeah. Thank you. Whew. In just a minute, Brother Savelle's coming. I have the honor. Y'all want some? This is good stuff. <laughs> of receiving this afternoon's offering. This is not money. This is investment. Investment in the future. Your future. I remember the first time I went on television, I started looking for television ministry to sow into. When I received my first airplane, I, I looked for ministries who had an airplane so I could invest in that. When I cut my first album, God, that was a long time ago, huh, Kathy? 70, I, did, I did five gospel albums, they all sold out. I mean, I, I, I got people around screaming at you ought to cut it out. Places that you could do some stuff. Just, you'd make, you'd make, it sell, I know it would. I don't do product just to sell it. I've been, in, I've been two directors and two producers in Hollywood want to do a movie on my Close Encounters of the God kind book. Pretty nice. But see, I told them, no, why? They want total freedom. No, 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 total rights. No, no, no. They said, we're offering you millions of dollars. I said, I've got millions of dollars. I'm not being arrogant here. I do. Money, you don't move me with money. Because money is just a natural thing. Ah, oh, but what does money do? In an economic world, it'll help create a vision. I'm asking you to give graciously in an afternoon offering. Give as good as it is hot outside. <laughs> and I want you to do your best. I want you to do it all week. Cause they, 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 uh, I don't know, did they tell them about the budget? Did y'all know what happened? that the budget's already, we're over the budget. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. Isn't that amazing? Now, every nickel, dime, thousand, hundred thousand, million, thousand, million, whatever you give it, has legs on it. Running, boy. And as it runs, it leaves residue for you to step in. Yes. And that residue yes. produces your vision, yes. whether it's secular, ministry, yes. I don't know, what do you believe in God for? Yeah. Your seed is connected to your vision. How many of you partners with Kenneth Copeland Ministry? Look at you. You wouldn't be if there wasn't a vision. So think about this whole week, hot as hell outside. <laughs> and, and devil sweating up a storm, my God. They ain't even started, they done made the budget. We in trouble, boys. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can believe for a hundredfold. I, I do it all the time. I, some people, I, they get mad. I know some word of faith, don't believe in a hundredfold. Well, just, just stay broke, you lazy self. <laughs> and I don't mean not to be rude. Listen to me, it's in red. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Can I say something? Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't. I'm going to say this, Florida. <laughs> Let me say it. I, I, um, Brother Kenneth E. Hagan, Sr., walked up to me, and I, I, I'm not worried to latch that man's shoelaces. I enjoyed Brother Hagan. I knew Brother Copeland more than I knew Brother Hagan. He said, Jesse, this is Brother Hagan, Sr. I said, Yes, sir. I didn't know what he was going to say, but I was really, I was listening, you know. I said, what? He says, you believe in a hundredfold? I said, yes, sir. He said, what do you base that on? I said, Mark chapter 4 and Mark chapter 10. He said, Mark chapter 4. I said, yes, sir. 
I said, the soul, soul of the word. He said, that's correct. Then he says this, Jesse, he's not talking about money there. He's talking about the word. This is years and years ago, before he even passed away. I said, that's right. He goes, I said, that's right. He's talking about the word. I said, but what's up in the word? Can I receive it hundredfold? He said, well, certainly. I said, you know, you taught us how to believe God for healing, no matter come hell or high water. I don't care if you're hurting. I don't care. What. My God, stand on the word and believe till you get it. And I said, the reason why you preached it, Brother Higgins, because it was in the word. He said, yes. I said, healing's in the word. He said, that's correct. Salvation in the word. That's correct. Then I leaned over to him and said, Brother Hagen, is money in the word? He goes, <laughs> look at my fingers. He, he started twirling his thumb. And I'm looking at his thumb. So I heard him do that. I didn't. He said, I never thought of it like that. I said, to me, it's not about money, but it's what's ever in the word. And then he said, do you know how much money God would have to give me if he gave me a hundredfold on everything I've ever given? I said, yeah. He ain't blinking and neither am I. <laughs> you're talking El Shaddai here. You're not talking El Chipo. You're talking big God here. Who flung stars with his hands. Who measured the <laughs> earth in the span. Who took a drop of water and measured the oceans. I think I changed his mind. Now you may disagree with me. You're going to have to wait to get to heaven. He said, I never thought of that. I said, Brother Hagen, I'm not worthy to let your shoelace it. But I know if it's in the word, I don't want it 30. And I don't want it 60. I can get that. I don't want a 30-fold healing or a, a 60-fold healing. I just want to be healed all the way. I want to feel good. I know it's radical, but there's signs everywhere. And all you got to do is read them. So I'm going to ask you to give. In just a minute, our brothers are going to come out and show you how to do that. You that are watching by wherever you're watching here on social media. Or, oh, is this on Victory right now? I don't know if it is or not. But if do something and watch. I'm telling you, stop counting the days. Count the hours. And just expect people think you're crazy. They think you're crazy anyway. <laughs> I like what Donald Trump told his daughter Ivanka. It's a great statement. He said, Ivanka, you're going to think anyway, so you might as well think big. Because you're going to think anyway. That makes total sense to me. We're going to have a good service tonight, and Brother Jerry's coming right now. Jerry, I apologize if I went over. It's Barry Tubbs' fault. He wanted me to receive the offering. <laughs> 